There's an interesting concept that is reinforced in today's Torah portion, Parshat Va'era, where we're introduced to Moses and Aaron coming to the Pharaoh and effectively ordering him to free the Jewish people from their bondage. Of course, Pharaoh refuses, and we know the ten plagues happen. The Jewish people are freed in the Exodus. They march, march to Mount Sinai. They were given a Torah, and that's, that's, that sets the stage for the rest of human history. The concept that we are taught in this week's Torah portion is the concept of balance, and that the Almighty makes the world, and He's created it and continuously runs it in a manner of fair and equal balance. There's a phrase by in Proverbs by King Solomon, God made everything equal and opposite measures. That for every extreme on one side, there's going to be a parallel extreme on the other side. And that's why in the Torah portion, you have all these fancy magic tricks that Moses employs to show that he is the messenger of God. But then the Egyptians are able to mimic him. Of course, that happens up until one of the later plagues where they cannot mimic Moses' tricks. And they realize this must be from the Almighty. Now, why did the Almighty give Pharaoh and his evil sorcerers the ability to mimic Moshe's tricks? And the answer is that we want them to be able to do this so that Pharaoh can have free will. If Moses comes right away and in a blaze of crazy miracles and glory is able to show these uh, sorcerers that he is such a powerful magician, there's no free will, there's no ability for Pharaoh to actually make a conscious and fair decision. And so they're able to mimic this. They're able to have parallel power so that Pharaoh can employ his free will in a fair and balanced arena. This is what happens for the first number of plagues until it's clear that there's clearly a supernatural force, namely God, and not the power of the Pharaoh. And then Pharaoh can make his choice, which he doesn't, of course, until Pharaoh brings upon himself the tenth and final plague, which is directly against him as a firstborn, and then he frees the Jewish people that's in the next week's Torah portion. Light and darkness, morning and evening, God has created the world with this kind of a balance. And so we have to understand and accept upon ourselves that when we hear of terrible things happening in the Jewish world, scandalous things, painful things, heartbreaking things, things where people are pained and hurt and scarred beyond belief, beyond comprehension, we have to at least, this hit me a few minutes ago, this thought, so it could be totally untrue. It's helping me a little bit. When you hear of such terrible stories as happened this week in the Jewish world, Perhaps it is a sign, though, that there is incredible holiness somewhere else in the Jewish people. That for every horrible story, which is inexcusable, unjustifiable, painful, there must be some sort of extreme opposite happening somewhere in the Jewish world where there is great hope and love and giving and kindness. Perhaps that is something that we can take away from this week's Torah portion, from recent events, and from the fact that Moshe understood the secret that, hey, I have to present Pharaoh the fair and balanced options. Even though by doing so, I prolong the Jewish people's suffering, everyone needs to live in a sane, balanced world. And when that person is not, then there's a form of abuse going on. Living in one extreme is completely unhealthy and irrational and totally antithetical to Jewish ideas. So if you find yourself doing too much in the other, one in one extreme, even in spirituality, you're taking too many misvot upon yourself, you're going too fast, it's unhealthy, it, we used to call them in yeshiva flamers, people who would go up in flames and smoke because they were doing too much, and it was too much mentally, and they broke down eventually. Take things slow, easy, balanced, but always in an upward trajectory. That is a Jewish approach, and that is one thing we learned from recent events, and certainly from this week's Torah portion. Shabbat Shalom.